Hello everyone. So welcome to Connect With Careers and this is our session on overseas volunteering, what, how and why. So I'm just going to introduce you to everyone that we've got here today. So I'll just take the slide down for a moment. So I'm Karenza Rands and I am the Volunteering and Mentoring Administrator within Career Central at UEA and we've got a uh, guest here today. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, perhaps Jack, would you like to go first? Yep, yeah, thank you Karenza. My name is Jack Butterfield. I'm from the amazing charity called Play Action International and I am the Fundraising and Partnerships Manager here. Awesome. Hi everybody, uh, my name's Lawrence. Uh, I'm one of the directors here at Traveltier and today I'm going to talk you through some exciting opportunities that hopefully you will join us upon. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Sienna. I am a project coordinator at Think Pacific, uh, so I spend half my time working UK side and half my time working in Fiji as well. Thank you much, but thank you very much everyone. I'm just going to pop our slides back on. Okay, so you might be thinking about what is overseas volunteering all about? So this is just a short snapshot bite sized session for you to find out a little bit more about what it is all about. So uh, overseas volunteering opportunities, as, as it says, are basically volunteering opportunities based overseas in different countries across the globe. So these can be advertised by both profit making and also non profit organisations as well. It might include a, a developmental kind of work experience opportunity that might be, say, one month, two months, something like that. It might be a working holiday. So you're traveling and then doing some volunteering as a part of that. Or it could be for a gap year or other, altern or other alternatives as well. So there's lots of different types of opportunities. So it depends what you're interested in and what charities, the, the sectors that they work in and the opportunities that they have. So you can find, for example, opportunities within educational activities, working with ch children and young people, within healthcare, international development and conservation, for example, amongst some others. Uh, the opportunities do vary in the length of time they, they are and when they take place. So some will be, for example, over the summer period where you might be able to do a full time opportunity for a period of time. And you often have to make a kind of uh, financial contribution to take part. So that might vary in terms of what that covers. So you need to be really clear about what is and isn't included. You may often have to pay for things like flights, accommodation, uh, visas, that kind of thing. But it's really good to try and find out what your contribution goes towards in terms of the project. There are some lower cost opportunities and some that might be a bit more of a higher cost. So you'll be able to decide what works for you. And you do often have the chance to fundraise towards the cost of, and taking part of these. And lots of the organisations have help and support to help you with doing that. So why think about overseas volunteering and what might you get from it? So everyone will have their different reasons as to why they want to volunteer, whether that's in the UK, but also overseas as well. It is a really invaluable experience. And we've heard from a number of students already who've really benefited from the experience of volunteering overseas. It's not just the activity that they've been doing, but the, the going abroad and living and experiencing in different countries and different cultures as well. So uh, many uh, students have gained lots of experience in a particular area, developed skills, but also grown as people as well. Uh, it also gives you a really good opportunity to gain a perspective on global issues and what is going on uh, in the world and help organisations work on some really fantastic projects. Projects that are really helping local people to develop their areas and have sustainable projects in those areas. So when you finish on that project, those projects can continue after. There's lots of stories on our pages so you can see how different students have benefited from doing overseas volunteering. And I'm sure that our organisations in here today will be able to kind of showcase like why you might want to be involved in some opportunities overseas as well. So how do you even start thinking about overseas volunteering? So there's lots of help and support out there. Through Career Central, we've got uh, an overseas fact sheet. So a volunteering overseas fact sheet, which gives you lots of starting points. So things about things to think about where to start, what considerations are there, what do you do next, frequently asked questions, how to find opportunities. 
You can also look at the wider information and resources on our information pages on My Career Central as well. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about some of the opportunities and resources that are out there. So this can be a really good starting point to, to have a little think about it. This is a big decision to make and there's lots of different opportunities and different organisations out there as well. So it's finding the right opportunity for you as well. So at Career Central, we only advertise volunteering opportunities with charities and non-profit organisations. So these are charities, non-profit organisations registered either in the country that they work within or and or within the UK as well. Some of the charities also are uh, registered here in the UK. And these organisations have met our due diligence checks and provided further information around the costs involved. So what is and isn't included? Where does that money go? The health and safety aspect so is the country safe to go to what's the advice around there what's in place for you when you're there as well um, the ethics and the sustainability around that project as well so you can be sure that you're working you're volunteering on something that is, is, a, is a good project and also like how you can find out more information can you speak to those who've already gone and volunteered in those areas and those opportunities where do you go to, you know, for support, for example, either before and then during that time as well? So is there support available in that country? So these organisations have all provided this information to us and we've then made that available to you uh, when we advertise that opportunities. Uh, you can look on My Career Central and the vacancy search to find volunteering overseas opportunities. You just go to type of work volunteering and you can select global as a location. And while they, if those organisations haven't got anything up there at the moment, a lot of them do advertise throughout the year. Uh, we also have an organisation chart which you can access and that showcases all the organisations that we currently work with in a more, close, uh, more closely way. And you can see kind of what they offer, where they're based, and it will have links to their websites as well. So if there's nothing currently live on My Career Central, you can look on there and find out more. I mean, and there are lots more organisations and opportunities out there than what is on My Career Central as well. It's just a starting point for you, but we are working with some of the really good organisations out there. Um, there. If you're looking for your own opportunity, the next slide here will show you how you can do that as well. So there are lots of ways to find your own opportunities. You might have a specific area, a specific sector, uh, a specific organisation that you're interested in. And so we've got some resources that we've provided for you. Um, so, for example, the first one there, you can search for further opportunities on our external directories and websites list. So this list is a range of different organisations and directories that showcase overseas volunteering opportunities. Now, we've just highlighted some of these and there are lots of other opportunities out there. These are provided there for your own research. So we're not implying that one organisation is better than another, but it's there to give you some guidance and support to help you. And if you look on there and you can't see anything that works for you, we've also got a resource where you can research an organisation and research opportunities yourself. So, for example, if you are thinking about an organisation that you'd like to approach, you've seen them, but you're not quite sure what opportunities they have. The resource gives you some questions to think about both yourself and questions to ask the organisation. So that might be around the organisation itself. So what status do the organisation have? Are they registered? Who owns and manages that organisation? The role, is it a developmental opportunity? Is it the right kind of volunteering role? Are you going to be doing something that is within your capacity? Does it have a defined role description so you know clearly what you might be doing in that activity? Uh, the costs that are involved as well and the support, the same kinds of things that we ask when we are looking at these opportunities as well. And again, around the travel and safety, what kind of travel restrictions might there be for the country that you might go to? Are there, um, is it safe there? What's the kind of evacuation procedures? Those kind of things as an emergency, what in country support is there? So all of these kinds of things as well are there to help you. And you can also make a volunteering appointment with uh, myself in Career Central, I'm Carenza, uh, where you can email me at volunteers at uea.ac.uk and I can help you with connecting you with the right information to help you make your own decisions and showcasing some of the opportunities already there. But if you want some help with looking at an opportunity, you can ask for help with that as well. 
it's really important to get do your research and get some objective advice and look at objective reviews as well you can see lots of websites and um, some organizations may particularly target students to come and join their opportunities and there's lots of good organizations that do that but there may be some that perhaps are, are less so so it's a case of making sure that you're getting objective advice and you can see reviews you can see all the information on the website and if you can't see it, ask those questions. And if the, you don't get answers to those questions or you're not sure, you know, perhaps that's not the right opportunity for you before you kind of sign up or pay out any, any money towards that as well. So that's a very brief overview of volunteering overseas. I do appreciate that was quite quick as well. Uh, but we want to give some time to our overseas voluntary organizations who are here today so they can showcase some of their opportunities. And as we mentioned, we've got, uh, I think, Pacific, Play Action and Travel Tier here today. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stop sharing these slides in a moment and I'm going to hand over to Lawrence first at Travel Tier. And he's going to take over from here and tell you a little bit more about his opportunities. Okay, just bear with me a moment. Uh, Lawrence, over to you. Hi there, guys. Uh, thanks for all coming to listen today. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to be talking to you about travel tiers uh, opportunities. Uh, we offer a series of different opportunities, university placements, uh, summer placements, uh, but I'd say predominantly we do aim at university students, where we roughly receive around 500 volunteers a year spread over our um, different locations, with about 90% of these being university students from up and down the UK. Um, we've been working directly um, with this university for about six years now or so, um, so we've got a really good uh, relationship here and we've had quite a few volunteers from the past join us. Um, to give you an overview of our uh, placements, so they, they run all year round, so you can join whenever you like, whether it be in term time or uh, in the Easter holidays or our busiest periods, obviously, over the summer holidays, and you can join us any time you like. Uh, you just arrive on a Sunday and then leave on a Sunday. Um, at our projects, there's anywhere from 30 to 50 other university students out there at the same time. Um, and it's really flexible. It's a great way to meet new people, but also get involved in some voluntary activities, which I'm going to go into more detail in just a moment. Um, our program lengths are a minimum of two weeks with no maximum stay. We actually do now full 12 month sandwich year placements as well, uh, which you can join us on. All we ask is that you are 18 plus, uh, obviously as a university student, Pretty much everybody's over 18 um, and that means you if you are interested in this even if you wanted to come with one of your friends they didn't necessarily have to be at the same university university as you uh, additionally they don't actually have to be at university at all just the majority of people we get are at university and to give you an idea about costs when you're there it is as little as 24 pounds a day uh, which breaks down to 10 pounds a day for accommodation eight pounds a day for food and six pounds a day for transport um, and when um, you speak to us we'll go into full details about that cost and how it's all broken down to ensure that we're as transparent as possible um, the first location this is probably our most popular location is Sri Lanka here we run uh, five different programs um, they are all based in the same area so when you're at the accommodation which is right on the beach in a little surf town um, you'll actually be with loads of other university students who are all doing different programs and how it works is your volunteering is from Monday to Friday then you've got your evenings and your weekends free to go and explore the place go surfing um, go on safaris all that kind of thing um, but first we have a marine and wildlife conservation program this is great for anyone who's studying anything directly related to this uh, maybe environmental studies geography or zoology but also we get a lot of people who have just a general interest in wildlife life who want to take this uh, project um, it, so we have our own turtle hatchery um, in Sri Lanka which looks after injured turtles we're also involved in rainforest replantation beach cleanups river cleanups and also agricultural projects uh, in the community and that's all to do with the marine and wildlife program then we also have an English development program so anyone maybe who wants to look at potentially a career in English teaching as they go, go older um, this could be a fantastic initial insight into this uh, into this world uh, and once again though you don't have to be studying a um, course directly related to this volunteer program but often people are uh, sports development 
maybe a keen sportsman or woman, get involved there with after school clubs. Uh, we actually teach PE in schools where unfortunately the schools we teach in don't actually have any uh, PE teachers. So we go in there and put on proper PE lessons. We also do various different healthcare projects as well. Mental health placements, which a lot of psychology students like to take up, on, um, to take up. Um, medical electives, nursing midwifery as well. And then finally, we have a textiles and design program uh, out in Sri Lanka. And as I said before, you can join us any time you like all year round with this program. Um, and um, the busiest times are, you know, that June, July, August, September. You just arrive on any Sunday and leave on any Sunday. Then we have an amazing program over in Nepal, uh, in a place called Pokhara. Um, this is a community development program, unlike Sri Lanka where people are on loads of different programs. With this one, everyone is on the same program, usually a team of about 20 of you or so. Um, the community development program revolves around three main different areas. So education, where you'd be going into mountain communities, helping with IT support, English teaching, various different things there. Infrastructure, so these are building projects. In the past, we've built toilets for schools, school kitchens, various different other projects there. And then finally, agriculture as well. So we build things called plastic greenhouses um, and irrigation systems to help um, with agriculture in the mountain villages. Uh, this program runs just through the summer months. So you can join us in June, July or August. Um, and once again, you'll be out there with loads of other university students. Um, then finally, this is a really short presentation, guys, just to give you an overview of what it's like. But finally, we have a new project, which is just starting this year in Costa Rica, um, which is an incredible project um, all around turtle conservation and wildlife conservation. Um, you'll actually be staying in the Osa Peninsula, right on the side of a national park. These pictures on the bottom left, this is literally where uh, you'll be staying. Um, it is very remote, but the opportunity to see wildlife there is unrivaled, it's incredible. You'll be involved in night watch schemes, um, morning watches, loads of different wildlife uh, research. Uh, and on uh, per year, there's roughly around 7,000 nests they get along the stretch, uh, turtle nests that is, along the stretch of beach there, um, where we're based. So it is uh, yeah, an incredible opportunity um, to have a completely different experience. And there will be more information about that on our website coming very soon. But that's our newest project. With all of our projects though, we provide all your food, all your accommodation, all your transport and 24-7 support while you're there. There's always members of the Travel Tier team around to help support you. Um, and like I said before, that's as little as £24 a day, uh, depending on which project you go on. If you guys are interested in finding out more, best thing to do is head to our website, which is www.traveltier.co.uk or you can always give our office number a call, 0115 874-4399 um, and how it works is you apply online or uh, over the phone uh, we then book you in for a phone call where we talk you absolutely everything over the phone explain how you can get involved what it entails break down all the costs everything from your flights and everything explained to you um, then we email you all this information and then you go away and decide if you'd like to join us um, but that's kind of everything from me I think we've got a little video hopefully that may or may not play depending um, to give you an idea of what it's like in Sri Lanka But yeah, if you're interested in applying, guys, we'd love to have you on board. Um, visit our website and, uh, yeah, go from there. Thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you very much. Uh, Jack, if I hand over to you. Yes, thank you very much. Let me just share the screen. Here we go. Been a while since I've been doing this. Hopefully you can all see this OK. Brilliant. OK, so. My name's Jack. I'm from the amazing charity called Play Action, Inter Play Action International, and I'm here to talk to you about our incredible Uganda Volunteer Project, which some of our former volunteers from this year, as well as years gone by, have described as one of, if not the best thing that they did during their time at university, and perhaps even their life. Um, we are a charity that's all about play, and realistically, to put this in a very, very uh, brief nutshell, you'll be spending either two or four weeks out in the Pearl of Africa, Uganda, helping to transform an empty field into a fun, safe and exciting playground for thousands of children to benefit from. So I'm going to transport you into next summer and let's imagine that you're going to be joining us out in Uganda. What do our programs look like? Well, it starts very simply with 
going straight from the airport in Uganda and meeting your school. You'll be taken straight to there where you'll no doubt be met by lots of people, lots of children, lots of school staff, um, parents, uh, the PTA, who will have known that you've been coming for months and are super excited to welcome you off the bus as you arrive. Then after a bit of respite and a bit of rest, you'll be getting straight into the volunteering of transforming this empty field into a fun, safe and exciting playground. That will involve things like digging, mixing cement, uh, mixing cement by hand. You don't get any of those funky uh, cement mixers out in Uganda, but you'll also be doing things like sanding and painting. Now, it's important that I mention that you're taking a part in those kind of activities, and that's what we describe as unskilled labor. It's really important to us um, because our volunteering opportunities are set up to be as ethical and sustainable as possible. By volunteering with us, you're actually creating jobs and protecting jobs, not taking them away. So throughout the year, we have a Ugandan build team who are building these incredible safe playgrounds throughout the country of Uganda and East Africa. And it's just in the summer, we have volunteers help out um, with the building of that. So our Ugandan build team will be doing everything from welding, cutting, all the kind of pre-safety checks that you'd expect skilled laborers to do. And it's just basically our volunteers who get involved in the unskilled labor side of things. And digging can be quite tiring. So don't worry, you won't be doing it all day in the afternoons uganda can get quite warm um you will again follow the lead of our ugandan play team um who will be putting together sessions all around play and how teachers out in uganda and east africa can incorporate play into the curriculum play is an absolutely wonderful way of learning it's how we all learn as children here in the uk and perhaps the western world and it's all something that is really fun for the volunteers to get involved it can involve things like sports days um, arts and crafts and also lots of other game favorites that you might have had from um, your childhood years growing up uh, incorporated into the ugandan school uh, curriculum itself but not only that you'll be given a chance to explore the Pearl of Africa at the weekends. Um, there is so much to do in the Pearl of Africa. It can be anything from quad biking, horse riding, uh, bungee jumping, if you're that way inclined. You wouldn't see me anywhere near something like that, but I know some of you are absolutely uh, game for things like that. But likewise, you can go and see the Big Five on safari out in Uganda or um, what I would highly recommend, having done it this summer just now, is whitewater rafting, which is absolutely incredible terrifying at times but absolutely immense so definitely one to tick off the bucket list um but after if you're spending two or four weeks eventually you'll be adding the finishing touches we provide the blueprints of the playground it's up to our volunteers to decide what the design looks like so you can be painting and adding your own kind of um creative mark on it a lot of our volunteers leave a symbol of a handprint under the slides to show that they've uh, helped put uh, their hand towards uh, these playgrounds themselves but essentially what all of our playgrounds are about are open days and as i mentioned you will turn what is basically an empty playing field into something that looks a lot like this an open day is a day like no other that you'll ever experience in your life it's the day where the children are first allowed to play in the playground so there's a big ribbon cutting ceremony they count down from 10 to 0 they cut the ribbon and then that playground that you've poured your heart and soul into creating for the last two or four weeks with your friends literally disappears under a swarm of children and you can hear the laughter see the smiles and feel the joy that this playground is not only bringing for these children on this particular day but for generations and generations to come so an absolutely incredible experience indeed well who are play action international well we are actually a charity that was formed by two students back in 2009 so we're very much by students for students um, today we've built over 400 playgrounds impacted over half a million children taking just under 2,000 students since 2015 we have one charity of the year this year 2022 at the national association of student fundraising association awards so very very um proud of that that's all down to the support and ethics and volunteers uh, um supporter journeys that we put them on and our playgrounds are primarily built in schools however throughout the year we also build them in hospitals refugee settlements as well as ca child cancer institutes as well and Despite being such a small charity, we only have three members of UK staff. Um, we have worked with and uh, had our work recognised by some big cheeses in the industry, so far as UNICEF, Plan, Save the Children, as well as their FCO as well. So why should you think about volunteering with Play Action International? 
Well, this is why, because not only are you going to be making the difference to thousands of children's lives, helping them recover still from the impacts that the pandemic has had on their halting their education, their learning, their development and ultimately their well-being. But you'll be making a pledge to yourself to do something different, to do something that's perhaps out your uh, comfort zone and maybe something that at this stage right now, you've never done anything like this before it might scare you a little bit. But honestly, you will come through this experience at the other side, not only a more confident person, more resilient, learning some incredible skills that are going to help you later on in life, but actually a person who's dedicated to making this world that we live in a better place for us all. And that's why you should volunteer with Play Action International, simple as. So I will ask you the question, what are you going to be doing next summer? Hopefully it will be volunteering with the Play Action International team, become a part of our Pi family. If you'd like some more information, download one of our brochures. There's a QR code on the screen, which you can scan and just pop some details in and you'll be able to get some more details of price, costings, what's involved and general itineraries as well. So thanks for listening, everybody, and hope to see you in Uganda soon. Thanks. Oh, thank you very much, Jack. That's great. Uh, so over to Sienna. So as I mentioned earlier, my name is Sienna. I'm from Think Pacific um, and I'm here today to talk to you about Think Pacific, who we are, what we do, why we do what we do um, and what you can be getting involved with if you fancy a trip out to Fiji in the summer next year. Um, so very briefly, just to give you a bit of context about Think Pacific, um, we are a UK social enterprise and a registered charity. So we kind of operate as two organisations under one big um, umbrella, I suppose. Um, so the UK side, we deal with the planning, logistics, organisation, operation, um, and our team out in Fiji deliver the programmes. Um, and what we do is we work in remote and rural communities in Fiji alongside various partners, organisations um, to deliver aims and initiatives as laid out by the Fijian government. Um, so we work very closely with a lot of different but the one that we kind of are most proud of is the government. Um, so we speak with them, we ask them, what would you like to see in Fiji? They tell us and we work together on producing these projects um, in rural communities. We are affiliated with lots of different universities as well, um, which paves the way for funding. Um, and there's different opportunities that students like yourselves can look into to come and join us out in Fiji. Um, and I'll try and speak as quick as I can, because there's a lot to go through and I'm, I'm very passionate about this. So. <laughs> I'll try and keep it brief, but we do operate in Fiji only um, and lots of people always ask me why. So I thought I would very briefly explain uh, because Fiji is a place that not a lot of people tend to know much about. Um, it is pretty much the furthest place away from the UK that you could get before you start coming back. Um, so Fiji is, in my opinion, one of the most fascinating, wonderful, most brilliant countries in the whole entire world. Um, it actually sits right in the middle of Micronesia, Polynesia, Melanesia. So it's a huge melting pot of cultures, customs, traditions. Um, the people in Fiji are absolutely fantastic and it is a completely different way of living. Um, it's a much more communal life. Um, everyone helps each other, supports each other, shares things. Um, it's, yeah, I couldn't speak long enough for how fantastic Fiji is. Um, and I think by going out there, you get to experience a completely different world view. Um, you see the world through a different set of eyes, I always say, and you get the chance to learn an invaluable, different and unique world view. But more broadly, um, why we focus just on Fiji is it because by operating in one area, it allows us to have a targeted impact. Um, we often joke that Think Pacific is a little bit of a misleading name because we don't operate in the whole of the Pacific. We work just in Fiji. Um, and this allows us to have that network, different organisations from NGOs, charities, businesses, enterprises, all the way up to the government that we work with in order to create a targeted impact. Um, and currently, Think Pacific are working to reach the United Nations Sustainable Development Plan um, and the Fiji National Development Plan. So everything we do is in line of meeting these things. So that's why we work in Fiji, um, but very briefly to give you a couple of ideas why you might join a Think Pacific project. Um, I myself joined a Think Pacific project in my first year of university, so I again could speak for a very long time about why I think you should do it. Um, but we've spoken with previous participants, um, staff members, and we've put together the six most common reasons people give for joining a Think Pacific programme. Um, firstly, to learn. As I mentioned, you'll be travelling out to Fiji. 
Um, it's the complete other side of the world. It's very different. You'll be exposed to different co cultures, customs, traditions, um, but also get that really important chance to learn about different perspectives, challenge your own worldviews, um, learn about different histories and ideologies, um, and also see firsthand the impact that sustainable development can have. Secondly, uh, if you want to challenge yourself, I think uh, the others will speak testament to whenever you go overseas to do any form of opportunity, it's a huge challenge. Um, and that's absolutely true of Think Pacific. We never try and hide it. We're very honest. It's it's difficult. You'll be living and working in a remote community. Um, so if you want to challenge yourself and do something differently, absolutely, this is the place for you. As with any opportunity like this, uh, contribution is a huge element. So if you're wanting to contribute towards the development um, of a country such as Fiji, then this is a way that you can do it. Um, and you'll be doing it by supporting initiatives of Fijian-led development. So we work with our partners um, and we do what they would like us to do as the experts in Fijian spaces. Um, we listen to them and we're kind of there to support the capacity of pre-existing initiatives. Four and five kind of come hand in hand together, experience and skills. Um, it's unlike anything I've ever done and I can assure you it'll be unlike anything you will ever do. Um, so you'll gain so many different experiences that can increase your employability um, but also work really nicely to further develop your personal and professional development. Um, and last but not least, you will make lifelong connections as you can see from this lovely photo. Um, I have multiple different Fijian families. I've got friends, I've got um, from volunteers to Fijians in villages or towns and cities I've met and they can't get rid of me. I'm with them for life um, and I'm sure it'll be the same for you. So very briefly, um, Think Pacific offers a variety of different projects. We have our one month projects, two months, 16 days or a study internship, um, all of which are based in rural communities apart from the study internship. Um, but today I'm going to talk you our one month projects as they are the ones that we run most frequently and we kind of see as our flagship program. Um, so first of all the one month project at a glance a very brief overview as to what you'll be doing is you'll be living and working um, in the heart of a rural Fijian village so it's a complete opportunity to have that full immersion into culture and customs. Um, at the beginning of your project, you'll have a briefing in a resort and at the end of your project, you'll have a time of reflection in a resort. But for three weeks, you will be living and breathing rural Fijian life. Um, so you'll be adopted into a Fijian family. And I definitely mean it when I say adopted. You'll be calling them mum and dad. You'll have brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, nieces, nephews. I'm at the point now I have more Fijian family than I do my actual family. Um, but you will be eating on the floor, sleeping on the floor adhering to all the different cultures, customs and practices within the village. Um, in this village is where you'll undertake your project. So whether it's mental health, sports development, um, community development or youth empowerment project, they will all be undertaken within this community. Um, and as it says at the bottom, we don't require any previous experience, but your mindset is absolutely everything. All we ask is that you come out with the right mindset, an open mindset, willingness to learn, um, and wanting to make that positive contribution, but also to have that experience to learn and experience something themselves. So our first project, uh, community project, is a build project. So this will be overseen by a Fijian build manager, who is then overseen by our Phil Fijian build manager, manager Francis, who is a complete legend. Um, and what you'll be doing is working on behalf of the Ministry of Health to build a community health centre. Um, it's really important to note it's not a doctor's, it's not a hospital. It's a building that's a, what would be called a medical dispensary. So somewhere for the community health worker to sort of be based in so that they can run clinics, they can receive funding and medication from the government. Um, we'll take this build from foundations through to putting up the weatherboard, putting on the roof um, and a huge, huge opening ceremony on the last day. Big party right the way through into the night. Um, you'll also be working alongside the village youth as well, so they have the opportunity to upskill in things such as carpentry, joinery, um, all those different things that enable them to then go on and apply for jobs in other areas. Second project and the one that we run the most of within the one month field is the youth empowerment project. Um, so this is sort of on behalf of a multitude of partners and it's working with uh, community youth groups, so aged 18 to 35. Um, looking at different 
workshops, seminars, activities, sessions surrounding key thematic areas for holistic development. Um, so this could be sessions on climate change and conservation, public health, mental health, entrepreneurship, leadership, um, and it's an opportunity to learn from the Fijians, but to also contribute your ideas. So we really want to make it that we're not going and teaching or preaching because we're in no position to do that. It's a cross-cultural engagement um, and an opportunity for both sides to hear a different perspective. Um, so yeah, the focus is very much on partaking in, engaging in these discussions, seminars and workshops to promote personal development um, and open a discussion, I suppose. Third project are our mental health projects um, and these are run with Youth Champs for Mental Health um, and the Ministry of Health, which are the two key players surrounding mental health in Fiji. Um, mental health is unfortunately still very stigmatised in Fiji and it's not an open discussion like we have here. Um, so we're not trying to go over and cure or anything like that. That's not what we're able to do. What we can do is take the discussion right back to the beginning and open that door. Um, so with Youth Champs, uh, we'll be again having these seminar style discussions um, where we talk about mental health, openness about it, sort of coping strategies, how we can support one another, signs to recognise um, and then some posts to support available within Fiji. Um, just a, a fact that I find really interesting or concerning um, is there's only three working psychologists in the whole of Fiji. So this is why mental health programmes are so important. And then last but not least, we have sports development. Uh, so that's working with NRL Fiji, which is the National Rugby League, um, to support the development of grassroots sports in Fiji. So as anyone who knows anything about rugby, they'll know that Fijians are fantastically gifted and talented but it means that other sports can be left sort of on the wayside. Um, so we'll introduce new sports, talk about the benefits of sports, coaching techniques, um, helping them set up their own sporting organisations within the community as well. Oh, there's a lot to get through. <laughs> so that is all will take place in the morning. In the afternoons, uh, you will be taking in cultural immersion. Um, so we then sort of, on the community, the youth group will be running sessions for our volunteers. Um, we call this the Darugweta Talimanda, which doesn't really have an English translation, but roughly means revitalising of culture. Um, and it will be an opportunity for you to experience firsthand completely unique Fijian traditions and customs, um, whether that's drinking kava, also known as yagona or grog, uh, learning mat weaving, basket making, billy billy making, um, learning about the family trees, religion, um, the, pol the idea of keri keri. Um, it's yeah an opportunity to learn firsthand these things that really are not seen outside of Fiji and are only really held on to orally and um, so without being there you'd never get the opportunity to experience them and trust me when I say it's yeah the most amazing thing you could ever have the opportunity to learn. As I mentioned earlier um, we're very open about the fact that Think Pacific isn't for everyone and in a way we kind of like we know it's a challenge. Um, when we say rural communities, we're not joking. You might be four hours up uh, by truck into the highlands, out an island, um, you're, you're cut off. Um, it is a very back to basics way of living. So you'll be sleeping on the floor, most likely on a mattress, um, having bucket showers, sometimes with a, a chicken or a goat accompanying you. Um, the food is very quite heavy, it's quite repetitive. You might not have any phone signal. Um, it is a culture shock. It's a very different way of living. You're pretty far away from home. Um, so we're open about those challenges. And if you think that that's not for you, then that's OK. Um, but if you're looking to step outside of your comfort zone, try and you're ready to take that challenge in the next step, then absolutely Think Pacific is the organisation for you. Um, so very briefly, this is all available on our website if you want to have a look. Um, our programmes run throughout the year, but most predominantly because the vast majority of people who come out are university students. Um, May, June, July and August are our busiest periods. Um, all of the pricing and the funding breakdowns are available on our website. So if you want to see exactly where your money goes, what your contribution does um, and all costs will be available on our website, which is www.thinkpacific.com for those wanting to have a look. Um, it's a huge thing to fly to the other side of the world and for, yeah, I'll be the first to say that and so we'd never want to send anyone out who isn't ready. Um, so 
beforehand, you'll be given access to our online portal. This will brief you on everything from kit lists, ethics, cultures and customs you'll be expected. We run through ideas of volunteerism and how we can actively work to uh, make sure that we're not engaging in that. Um, you'll have a private online community where you'll get to meet the other members of your team. So you'll be in a team of up to 24 other students all in the village together. Um, you'll have online pre-departure briefings from our UK and our Fiji team. Um, and then obviously when you head out into the country, you'll have that briefing period at the beginning. You'll meet your expedition leaders who will be with you 24 seven um, and your leaders are then backed up by coordinators and management. So there's a lot of pre-departure prep and a lot of support whilst you're out there as well. Um, and if you ever want to get in touch with any Think Pacific team, absolutely please do. Um, it's really easy to get hold of us. Um, our email is info at thinkpacific.com or you can find us on Facebook. And obviously no one is here live, so you can't ask me any questions. Um, but if you do have any questions, as I say, you can pop them to this email address um, and myself or one of my colleagues would be more than happy to answer. Um, so a huge manaka vakalim, which means thank you very much for listening. And I hope to see some of you guys out in Fiji very soon. That's great. So we're just going to finish off with just a couple more slides as well. I think you've clearly said there, if anyone's got questions, they can contact you individually at the organisations. And there's lots more information on the website, the videos and all of that. So that's fantastic. Um, so for everyone else, in terms of your next steps, so I'm just going to pull up a slide here. So this will just kind of show you what you might want to think about next. So you've heard all of this. You're really interested in uh, thinking about overseas volunteering and checking it out. Obviously, you've got the organizations here you can look at. Uh, they've got all their website links, but you can also check them out on My Career Central and see their latest opportunities on there as well. Please do have a look at online resources on My Career Central as well. There's lots of help there. And there's also help for when you secure an opportunity and things to think about as well then. If you're not sure, if you're unsure if it's for you, talk to your organisations, talk to us further at Career Central. So you can come in and see us at the welcome desk in the library. Uh, we have a live chat function and we're also running some volunteer drop-ins um, in the library uh, through this academic year as well. And you can also make a volunteering appointment with myself at volunteers at uea.ac.uk. Plus, you can talk to a careers advisor if you're thinking about kind of your pathway, your career journey and thinking about volunteering and what you want to do and, and what might lead you to the place you want to be. You can talk to a careers advisor as well. Is there anything else anyone uh, here today wants to add uh, before I just finish off? I think just for me, um, perhaps maybe speaking out of turn, but also on behalf of everybody, just to reiterate what you're saying, Karenza, if you're unsure about what kind of opportunities there are, obviously My Career Central is a good place to go. And knowing that if they're on My Career Central, as Karenza said earlier, they would have done their due diligence on us. Um, so if you are not sure about kind of um, some aspects of the programme, whether it's cost, whether it's what you're actually going to be doing, or whether it's just hearing from someone who's been on the projects before, um, get in touch. I'm more than happy to help out and I'm sure Sienna and Lawrence are as well from their respective organisations as well as others. So yeah, do reach out because um, if you don't ask, you don't get in my in my opinion. So if you're ever not sure about anything, just reach out. We'd be more than happy to help because that's our job, basically. Thank you, Jack. That's great. Uh, Lawrence, Sienna, was there anything you wanted to add at all? I suppose. Um... I don't know if I'd get in trouble for saying this, I don't think I would, but regardless of it, Think Pacific or any organisation, um, as a student who went abroad during their time at university, and that's sort of how I got into this field, it was hands down the best thing I have ever did and the best decision I've ever made, sort of, in terms of the amazing experience I had, but also what it did for me on a personal development and a professional development sense. So even if it's not Think Pacific, if it's another organisation, I could not encourage you to do it enough. It's, yeah. The best decision I made and I think it's it might seem big and scary um, but that's why people like myself or Jack or Lawrence are here to talk to you if you are unsure if you want any questions answered um, so if you're umming and ahhing look into it and chat to someone about it because it's definitely worth considering yeah and I guess a uh, final comment um, with with what with whatever kind of project you go into just um, do your own research on it as well make sure you uh, the costs are transparent you know what you're going to be doing on the projects um and uh yeah it, it will be a fantastic experience and 
uh, like Sienna said, it can be quite nervous, uh, nerve wracking at first, especially if you know you're traveling on your own, uh, maybe your first time away from your parents. Um, and just know, I think with all the organizations here, you know, there's lots of people who go on these projects who are in exactly the same shoes uh, as you're going to be. So speak with the team and um, yeah, well, hopefully you'll be joining uh, Travel Tier or one of the other organizations soon. And you know, I can guarantee though, whatever you do, you won't, uh, will not regret uh, traveling out to one of these uh, organizations. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. And thank you for being here today as well. So just to finish off the session, thank you really for joining us online and watching this session. Uh, I've got lots of other events taking part with the Connect with Careers event in the autumn. And so you can see more information on there and you can also visit My Career Central. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll all be interested in volunteering overseas. Thank you. Bye bye.